God, dog. Boy, look at this dude. Like, like y'all, how, how do you not look at this face and just, like, not laugh? Like, seriously, y'all. Like, like, do you look at this face and it's like a hundred things start running through your head. I mean, you know, like, <laughs> egghead, crystal clean is the man. You know, shine that head up. I mean, I, 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 boy. <laughs> Woo. But, buddy, let me, let me tell y'all something. And let me really educate y'all something, okay? <clears throat> you got a lot of people running around here saying, <clears throat> Dana White don't care about the racist comments, and Dana White just letting these people say this. Look, y'all know I can't stand Dana White just like anybody else. I can't stand him, okay? I truly, legit cannot stand Dana White. I, I can't stand this guy. But if y'all saying that maybe this makes him racist, you know what? He he pretty much I gotta agree with other fighters. He kinda let you say what you wanna say. He don't care. The man really don't care. He don't care about color. Dana White don't care nothing about no color. He care about green. <laughs> How green is the color? That's what he care about. How green is the color? Because if you can talk green, how you doing? If you can talk green, you can talk to him. He don't care. He don't care about these fighters' issues. Dana, Dana is cold-hearted. I don't see it because I'd rather somebody let people say what they're going to say because I like my people, racists, I like for them to come out. See, I don't like for them to be hidden. I don't like for them to be hidden. And you know, the stuff that Kobe come to say, yeah, I believe it's racist, straight up. But see, just imagine if Dana White put a muzzle over people's mouth. See, then they would try to hide it. They try to hide it. The statements by Kobe Covington, yeah, crazy. And Kobe Covington lucky, man, that ain't nobody killed him yet. Like, guys, I'm legit serious. He lucky ain't nobody tried to kill him yet. What? Well, no, scratch that. Yes, he did. Yes, they did. They tried to kill his ass in Brazil. They tried to, okay? Um, but I'm shocked that ain't nobody in America done tried to kill this boy on the street. But Dana White, he kind of let you say what you want to say. He do. Now, one thing, though, and I got to I gotta give y'all this. I got to tell y'all, okay? The whole thing, we kind of, there's a contradiction to that. And there's one thing, and I guess if somebody want to argue with me and say, well, she didn't say anything, it's the whole Black Panther thing with uh, Angela Hill. Because Angela Hill wasn't allowed to express herself with the Black Panther outfit. That's the only thing that I can really think about that I've known that, okay, this dude, okay, they tripping. They tripping hard, okay? But for the most part, I've heard fighters, all fighters, I've heard a lot of fighters say some, some stuff, and he stay quiet. <laughs> Dana don't say jack, man, about anything. I mean, you know, <laughs> he just don't say nothing. But I think that's good. I think it's very good because I want my racist people in full-blown view. I want to know who they are. I want to see their face. I want to know who their face is. I want to know because when you got somebody who hidden and they try to portray like that they for and they not something, well, then you get this deception, okay? I mean, yeah, you know, fighters came out. Shout out to Sarge Eubanks. Shout out to Israel Adesanya. Shout out to Kamaru Usman that they not afraid to speak up and call them a racist. They not afraid. And I'm glad, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of them, man, for speaking up the way that they did. Okay, because they could have been like some of the other fighters and not say nothing and just be like, oh, well, I don't want it to affect my money. I don't want it to affect my, you know what my thing is. You know, they don't care. Sarge Eubanks came out. Sarge Eubanks was the first one to say something. She was the first one and she put it out there. And then, you know, Israel Adesanya came out and then Kamara Usman came out. Because, guys, whether you want to believe it or not, whether you dis disagree, that's fine. You can disagree. And I don't care if you disagree. Cool. We just going to agree to disagree. See, it's that simple. It don't have to be, oh, man, we just disagree. Okay, we do. That's just what it is. <laughs> but the sentiments, when you're talking about a man's tribe and you're talking about his culture, it's racist. When you tell them, go, go send smoke signals from the tribe, that, that, y'all, that shit is racist. Okay, I don't care how you slice it and dice it. And some of y'all probably think it's funny because you're racist. It's cool. But Dana White not going to say nothing. You're not. 
I see how Kamaru Usman chooses to retaliate. <laughs> Ooh, how he choose to retaliate. Now that, because I'm going to tell you something, man. Kamaru Usman is playing it off real good. He playing it off. And I, done, I know, I done, I done got on Kamaru Usman a couple of times for him, you know, begging Dana White for a payday and all this other mess. And I'm sitting here like, wait a minute, man. This is our Nigerian brother. Why is he begging? You know, what, what the hell? You know, okay, I, I've gotten past all that. But I do know Kamaru Usman, he's a very, very proud man. He's extremely proud. And I'm going to tell y'all now, okay? Kamaru Usman is thinking about how he's going to hurt and dissect Kobe Covington, okay? This this is personal, okay? Kamaru Usman tried to keep his composure, but Kamaru Usman is a straight-up killer, okay? And I think had the fight not have been stopped with him and Kobe Covington, Kamaru Usman probably would have killed that dude, for real. I mean, did y'all see, like, the final moments of the fight, man, where Kamaru was just beating him, man? And you can kind of tell that Kamaru became possessed, man. Like, legit, man, that dude looked like he was possessed. And it's like, he wasn't going to stop beating him. He wasn't going to stop beating him. I think the next time, man, I think he completely put Kobe out for damn near two years. He put Kobe out. Kobe didn't get a paycheck for nine months, Okay. That ought to tell you, and Kamaru wasn't even, like, infuriated. Well, you, could, can you imagine getting him in there? Because let me tell you something about Africans. See, and I told I educated y'all on Brazilians. So let me tell you something about Africans, okay? Africans, they're very proud, especially when it comes to their, to their, like, individual tribes. They take that seriously. See, those fighting words, those, not even only those fighting words, those are words that you, that you fight to die for. Like, I'm going to tell you. You go to Africa and you insult somebody's tribe, you go there and if you do that or if you do it, and, and see, Kobe Covington is going to be in physical pain when he meet Kamara. When Kamara see him, Kamara will probably damn near likely to beat this boy up on the street. But if, when he get him in the octagon, I'm telling you, man, Kobe Covington is going to get hurt. And I'm talking about Kamara Usman going to do more than break this dude's face. Kamara Usman going to put him out. And Kobe Covington better be prepared, man. He better be prepared because Kamaru is that much of a better fighter than him. He's that much of another fighter. He's going to come in there. He's going to beat him down. Kobe Covington, guys, he's going to take a major L. So he can enjoy what he's doing now. He can enjoy his little payday with uh, um, Jorge Masvidal. He can enjoy all of that. But when he see Usman again, y'all, that's a wrap. That's a wrap. This boy going to be in a coma.